I never did get to say welcome to my crib. You, oh, would you like to turn, come back, say it. Welcome to my crib. <laughs> <laughs>Okay, so how much do you pay in rent and roughly where are we in Paris? I pay thirteen hundred. Twelve fifty is the rent and yep. fifty is like the building charges and stuff. Okay. And then we're in the eleventh. Okay. You mean the building charges isn't included in your rent? Well, they have a maximum of what they can charge for rent okay. based on the surface area of the apartment. Yeah. Not all landlords do this, mm. but my landlord is good and that he knows the rules and so this is within what he is allowed to charge yeah it's on the higher end um, but it's not the highest yeah and then building charges are separate to that so they can add the building charges on top okay that's so then also that's a good question how many square meters is your apartment 36 36 square meters and hey, just taking a moment here outside to thank the sponsor of today's episode, BetterHelp. We joke around a lot about how stressful it is to find an apartment in Paris, but it really isn't a joke. Like it can be quite stressful and it can be a rough time sometimes. So it can be very helpful to have someone to speak with. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I'm a huge fan of therapy. It's done me a world of good personally. And so it feels like a win-win to have a sponsor like BetterHelp that enables people to connect with providers of all varieties around the world. And they're really cool because they make it super easy to find the right one, not only because they connect you with so many, but because they'll let you switch between them with no questions asked until you find one that you want to stick with. So whatever it is you need to talk about, whatever it is that you're working through, struggling with, or you just want to invest in yourself a little bit, give BetterHelp a try at betterhelp.com slash jswanson. They'll give you 10% off your first month. And they've been one of the most supportive sponsors I've ever had on this channel, if not the most I think they might be the most supportive overall. Give them a try. Betterhelp.com slash Jay Swanson. Thanks. And now, back to Taylor's apartment. All right, what are the quirks of this place? Well, we're standing in one. Probably the hallway kitchen that we have. So the front door is right there. So you come in and bam, kitchen. Yeah, and that never really registered to me, but it is, it is a weird feeling. Yeah. And this. <laughs> what is this? I don't know whose idea it was to put grout in a space where you cook and you spill things. This is definitely a quirk. And I think about how quirky it is once every month, maybe like two months when I take the little scrub brush and I go through and I clean out all the grout. And you can really see all the times that I have spilt coffee or tea. We also have our lovely uh, corner sink, which is ideal for when you're trying to do dishes. I'm sure that it was done this way for a reason and it probably has to do with the space, but it's still, when you're doing dishes and you're kind of having to like reach over, you can't really get flush against the counter. So usually there's water here, water there, water all over the floor. And because it's hardwood, the floor is really gorgeous, but because it's hardwood, you have to be really careful with water. So I'm like doing dishes, trying to like wipe up, wipe up the water with my foot as I go. When I do dishes, if I do dishes. When she flips her hair. <laughs> Can we, show them, can we show them my tea shell? You're very proud of your tea collection. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> oh, this is cool. This one I actually forget about because I'm so used to it. But in the bedroom, we have this glass wall that separates the shower from the rest of the bedroom, which I feel is kind of normal in France. I guess it's kind of normal to have a shower in your bedroom, but coming from North America, feels a bit odd. It does keep it kind of open. I feel like that if this was kind of just like a flat wall, it would make it feel quite a bit smaller. But it does mean that you could really never have a roommate because you can see through to the shower. And then we have our shower room. <laughs> we have my, my clothes that are fast drying. Don't look at those. <laughs> Nobody has dryers in Europe. I missed mine. You I know. I dry my clothes on the electric drying rack. And then we have our little shower. Perfect. So there you go, and this room is just one big closet, let's be honest here. What are the perks of this place? Uh, this. Come in. I mean, because you come in and you see hallway kitchen and you're like, oh, look at this nice orange and blue grouting. Uh, and then you turn the corner and you walk in here and this is my favorite room with the lighting and the big wood beams and just kind of like the open space. This was what kind of made me fall in love. And I think what I said when I walked in is like, oh my gosh, I would love to have an apartment with a room like this. And that's when the people who were renting it at the time said, hey, actually we're leaving. Would you want to try renting it? So I know, I know, very lucky. What else are you proud of in here? Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, you're drying, you're, speaking of not having a dryer, you've, you've improved your space for that. <laughs> 
for the drying. Yeah, would you, would you go show, show it to, what is, what is this? The drying situation. It was here when I came in. <laughs> I requested it be left up. But we have this because there isn't a whole lot of drying space. And while I do obviously hang pajamas on it, it was mostly for sheets. Because as you can imagine, tiny apartment, trying to air dry your sheets, it used to be like a drying room in here. So you would sling the sheet over one chair and then put another chair over there and kind of like try to clip it up there. It got really crazy. So installing this and you just kind of like flip the sheets over. And it doesn't mean you can't see the TV, but it's Paris. You've got plenty of books. There we go. <laughs> I do, look at the shelves. Yeah, yeah, what about these? Did you put these together? I did not put the shelves, the actual shelves together. They were built in when I moved into the apartment, which is really nice because there's very few apartments that have anything built in here. Hello. Uh, and then I went about filling them and this has taken probably about two and a half years for the first year that side was just full of boxes. But I am very proud of, whether you like my decoration skills or not, I am very proud of the little decorating I've done and all of the, all the little memories of the last seven years here in Paris. And then just kind of making the best of the space because I'm a teacher and I do a lot of my work at home. Got my little like file folders in the corner with all my students work, my big chunk of paper is underneath there that needs to be marked, but that's fine. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> and then, yeah, it just makes me really happy when I come into the space, especially I'm a memories person. Would yeah. you like a, a picture of my great grandfather, Leopold, who yes. is why I'm going to be European? Oh, that's right. Congratulations. He's your Luxembourgish grandfather. Yeah, he's right there. Oh, that's awesome. Do we, do we see the resemblance? Thanks to today's patron producer, Ian Sutherland, and all my patrons for making this possible. And also, for those of you that are watching, even if you're not a patron, if you subscribe to my Substack, Jay Swanson, substack.com slash Jay Swanson, we have a free like apartment renter's guide that we put together. It's five pages long. A couple of friends helped with that and you can just get like a lot of really good information all in one place if you're looking to rent something in Paris. Or if you're just curious, you can check that out. I'm gonna pretend I can hide in the shower again, but in reality you can still see me because it's, it's made out of glass. This, I don't know why I'm standing in the shower now. This is just ridiculous. <laughs> so what's the story of how you got this place? <laughs> well, how did I get this place? <laughs> why don't you tell how you got this place? <laughs> Um, I have a friend who knows the landlords. Yep. Um, and while I did put together a dossier, mm -hmm. I feel that if I didn't have a friend who knew the landlords, my dossier may have been a bit lacking. Might not have been quite up I to snuff. So. All right, well, I'm glad that I could help pull some weight. Yeah. So then do you have any advice for people looking to get an apartment here in Paris? I know that you obviously got it. How did you, have you gotten your other apartments? And then do you have any advice for people looking to find one here? I've been really lucky yeah. with my apartments, so I feel that my advice is maybe not as helpful as other people's <laughs> might be. My, mine might not be either, so. <laughs> the no. only person who's done better than me in apartments is you, yeah. I think. Well, hey, just got to volunteer in West Africa for a few years and you never know what'll happen. Oh, good, I think. <laughs> That's the trick. <laughs> <laughs> but I, my first apartment, I was an au pair. Okay. I guess the first place I lived was with my au pair family, which mm -hmm. was in the 16th, which is a completely different vibe from the 11th. And then I moved into the fifth because someone that was also an au pair was looking for another person to share in the kind of like apartment space. Mm -hmm. And that was a three floor, almost Norman style yeah. apartment that was on the third or the fifth floor of this really old building in the mm -hmm. fifth arrondissement. And that was an experience. Did also have in that apartment bed bugs and cockroaches. Okay, so less amazing, <laughs> yeah. Um, but the full we urban experience. Really, truly. But once we got rid of the bed bugs and rid of the cockroaches, uh, it was a beautiful apartment. That was great, yeah. What other advice do you have for people that are looking for an apartment here? I think that a lot of people have said it's really tough to get an apartment in Paris, mm. and it is. But I do think that your mindset is also helpful when you're going into things. Just to remember that if you go into a situation and say, this isn't gonna work out, I'm never gonna find an apartment, that that's maybe not helpful for the situation. So as ridiculous as that may sound, going in and thinking, I am gonna get an apartment, they are gonna like me, yeah. can be helpful. Mentality helps a lot, yeah, yeah, for sure. And also when you're budgeting, I think sometimes people forget that utilities can be quite expensive in France, mm. especially electricity. This place, the electricity bill is an extra 100 euros a month and it was only 80 last year, but mm. this year, according to my little app, we're using less electricity than we were the year prior, yeah. but our bill is still more expensive. Uh. 
So Let's keep that in mind when you're looking for a place as well. Yeah, taking your max budget and yeah. then looking for places that are about like 200 euros cheaper mm. so that you have space for utilities. Yeah. If they happen to adjust things, because here, if you use more energy mm -hmm. or more electricity, they'll bill you at the end of the year. And yeah. so then you get an unpleasant surprise on that front. And also with the water we were talking about last time, how if they don't get an accurate reading, they'll just charge you the max. Yes and reimburse you later. They'll reimburse you. It's more like you'll fight to be. <laughs> to be reimbursed, reimbursed, yeah. They won't do it out of the goodness of their hearts. You'll have to you'll have to remind them you need that money back. Yeah, they did almost take a thousand euros out of my account once. Wow. And I clocked it like right before it happened and I blocked the transaction from happening. Okay, good. Um, and then- I'm Sure they were thrilled about that. They were thrilled, but I did call them yeah. in like a panic. And the man was kind of going like, there's nothing we can do, c'est pas possible, c'est pas possible. And then I burst into tears and he goes like, I'm in madame, don't cry. Like in French, he's like, we'll figure it out. And I was like, I guess that's what you have to do is you just have to. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not possible until you cry. Until you cry. And then, then suddenly, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. <laughs> Any warnings or anything for people, like life experience in the neighborhood, I guess? It happens a lot in this building specifically. And I think, I mean, it happens in other buildings as well. I've heard of some friends in the 11th, mm -hmm. stuff like this has happened to them. Uh, but you get all cozy in your apartment and you think that everything's going well and you get a knock at the door and it is a person who is asking like, hey, I'm here to check the gas. And I don't have gas in this apartment. I only have electricity, so no thank you. He's like, oh, well, okay, are you sure? I'm like, I'm sure. He's like, well, there's been problems in this building. Super sure, don't have gas. He's like, well, do you have a chimney? Don't have a chimney either. And this kind of went on for a second. And I was like, look, I don't have gas. I don't have a chimney. Nothing needs to be done in this apartment. And so I started him, he started me. Eventually he was like, okay, good day. But I have heard of friends that it's happened to that they've pressed a little bit more and said, you know, there's a problem. And if you don't get this problem fixed, you're going to be charged or the pompiers are gonna have to come and then they're gonna charge you. Um, and turns out what it is is what the French call an arnaque, which is a scam. Yeah. Uh, so they come into the apartment and then they do work and like, hey, maybe they will actually sweep out the chimney, but then they charge you. They're like, okay, well now you have to pay us 400 euros or something like that. And yes. they sweep the chimney with a Q-tip really quickly. Really and then, quickly yeah, and yeah. Like, okay, bye. Hey, it's all good to go. Yeah. Good, good old scams, they'll get you. Well, thank you, Taylor, for bringing us around in your lovely home. It's very nice and cozy. You're welcome. And Christmassy in January. It's going to be up until February. Do it, please. It keeps the winters long enough as it is. Well, that's why the, all the lighting in here. I've really gone overboard with the soft lights. What's it called in? It's the, in Dutch. Oh! Uh. Hushel. Uh, oh, shoot. Somebody taught me this word. Yeah. Not uh, even two. Higa? Is it Higa? Uh, maybe. I think so. That's going to make comments happen if that makes the edit. Wow, okay. <laughs>